The airplane, symbol of our mastery of the skies, is spanning oceans and continents in ever-dwindling hours, bringing new hope to the people of the world, new horizons to industry, and new careers to youth. For air transportation has proved itself a vital factor in the social and economic life of modern civilization. It is a rapidly expanding industry embracing many trades and professions, an industry employing thousands of persons. For example, to keep each airliner in the air today, over 100 workers are needed on the ground. Many of these are engaged in office work. Of this number, the reservations department, comprises a specialized group. It is here that flight schedules, rates, reservations, and related subjects are communicated directly to the public by telephone. The work is interesting, but requires tact, sales ability, and a pleasant, well-modulated voice. Another reservation's job is at the ticket counter. Here, however, the duties include the actual issuing of tickets through direct personal contact with the public. As in many departments, the work is handled in shifts, for around-the-clock service characterizes the industry. The welfare of the passenger is of paramount importance. To care for his needs, men known as transportation agents are employed. Well trained in government and airline regulations, they have often gained their experience in previous jobs such as cargo agent, reservations representative, or similar work. Through on-the-job training, they learn how to prepare flight movement reports and coordinate the dispatching of passengers, mail, baggage, and freight. Transportation agents also contribute to the safety of the airline operations by determining the proper weight distribution of cargo. The operation of an airline requires countless messages in order to coordinate all departments. This is generally done by teletype and radio. Many of the teletypists are women, a large number of whom obtain their training in commercial schools. Accuracy and speed, as well as a knowledge of airline codes, is necessary. Although important, their work does not require the extensive training demanded of the radio operator. In addition to operating, he must be able to maintain and repair radio and telephonic equipment. He must hold a radio telephone second-class license or better issued by the Federal Communications Commission. The radio operator keeps in close touch with planes in flight, advising them on such things as operational details and weather conditions. Using weather balloons and various recording devices, the United States Weather Bureau gathers nationwide climatic information and sends it via teletype to airlines throughout the country. The information is then charted, analyzed, and interpreted into weather forecasts by the airline's meteorological department. This work requires specialized college training and unusual accuracy and judgment. But the key figure in all flight operations is the flight superintendent. He is the man who decides whether the planes will fly or not. He releases all planes on his division, follows their progress in the air, and keeps the captains or pilots advised of conditions affecting their flight. The flight superintendent, together with the captain, plans each flight in detail. This exacting work calls for a pilot who is also a qualified dispatcher, certificated by the Civil Aeronautics Authority. In addition, he must have an accurate knowledge of communication facilities. His responsibility is great, for he coordinates all flight operations to achieve these objectives, safe, swift, and dependable air transportation. But the safety of operations also depends upon the proper maintenance of planes. For this reason, many skilled mechanics must be employed. Their work is highly specialized, and those who direct or supervise such work must hold a federal government certificate and rating depending upon the type of work they do. For example, mechanics qualified to supervise work on general maintenance, including dismantling, welding, or fabricating, must hold what is called an A, or aircraft certificate. Others who supervise and approve engine work only 
are required by the Civil Aeronautics Authority to hold an E or engine certificate. But no matter what their chosen field may be, regular apprenticeship courses or equivalent technical schooling is required. However, planes need more than mechanical attention, for they must also be washed, cleaned, and polished. This general utility work calls for no special training and is done by fleet service helpers. Thus, only through regular and thorough maintenance can the airlines provide the service and schedules upon which the passengers depend. The arrival and departure of planes is regulated by dispatchers in the control tower. These men serve as traffic coordinators, keeping congestion at the field to a minimum. They are employed by the federal or local government and must hold a certificate which signifies their knowledge of air traffic regulations. For those young men who enjoy working out of doors in all kinds of weather, there are opportunities as ground crew members. Fast work in refueling and servicing of planes is required. Ground crewmen, as well as cargo handlers, need little training, but should be able to maintain simple records. Cargo handlers must know how to load cargo properly, according to its destination. In other words, what comes out first should be loaded last. Yes, there are many workers essential to air transportation, but throughout this number, the flying crew is perhaps the most colorful group of all. An important and familiar part of this crew is the smiling hostess or stewardess who anticipates the needs of every passenger. A hostess must be a person of charm as well as capability. To qualify on most airlines, she must be healthy, single, and between the ages of 21 and 28. She must be between 5 feet 2 and 5 feet 6 inches in height and of normal weight. Girls who are accepted receive special training in the rudiments of flight regulations, air routes, meteorology, and aeronautics. To be eligible, at least one year of college or three years of equivalent business experience is necessary. A knowledge of foreign languages is becoming a definite asset with increasing worldwide air routes. When the passengers are aboard, the ground crewmen clear away all service equipment in preparation for the takeoff. One by one, the huge engines roar into action as another giant of the air prepares to thunder down the runway. Many workers in all kinds of jobs have coordinated their efforts to make this flight possible. But without the skill and knowledge of the pilots, the plane would never leave the ground. These men with wings represent but a small number of all airline employees. Their qualifications are high. Perfect health is essential. They must have hundreds of hours in the air and an intimate knowledge of aeronautics and related subjects. The competition for this work is extremely keen and only those with unusual ability and experience can expect to find employment. The majority of job opportunities are to be found in airline passenger service. However, freight and air express services are expanding rapidly to meet an increasing demand for swift transport of medicines, perishable foods, furniture, and hundreds of other products. And in the future, this branch of air transportation will offer employment possibilities for pilots, as well as many others. But opportunities in air transportation are not restricted to large airline organizations. Many small companies and individuals maintain private planes, providing transportation or feeder service between local points. In work such as this, there are jobs for pilots, field managers and airport engineers, mechanics and helpers, CAA control tower operators, link trainer instructors, flight instructors, and many others. But the need of training and education for the better positions and higher paying jobs cannot be overemphasized. Colleges and specialized schools throughout the country maintain facilities for teaching different phases of air transportation. The armed forces offer exceptional opportunities for young men to acquire skill and experience in many aviation jobs. Technical books, trade magazines, and government publications provide current information and trends in air transportation. And airlines from coast to coast maintain training programs for all types of work vital to this expanding industry. 
but obtaining employment will not be easy competition for jobs is great and the total number employed is comparatively small however the industry makes up for this by the variety of jobs it offers individual qualifications are a deciding factor and if you want to learn and earn your living in a youthful and romantic industry air transportation presents a challenge and an opportunity for your life work